Hello everyone. This story is about, what if Naruto and Hinata married early? Hope you like it. Let's start. How could she know that a single cry to the boy she admired would make all the difference in the world? She couldn't, of course. Yet that would prove to be the case. Hinata was watching closely as Naruto faced Kiba during the preliminary round of the final Chunin exam. She wanted to support Naruto, after all the years of watching him, she had come to admire him greatly, so of course she wanted to root for him. However, Kiba was her teammate, so she was torn. Who should she cheer for? Who should she support? Her teammate, or the boy she admired? So it was for that reason that she remained silent for much of the match. XXXXX Naruto had said he did his best work with a handicap, which was generally true, and yet Kiba and Akamaru were soundly beating him. He couldn't keep up with Kiba. The feral boy was just too fast. It was all Naruto could do to keep on his feet. He was happy that everyone was watching his fight, but he was getting annoyed that he was getting his but kicked with everyone watching. No one had ever believed in him, and now he was proving them right. Damn it. Why did he have to prove them all right like this? And why was no one calling for him to do better? No one. His head hung in shame. No one cared that he was losing here. No one. All he needed was just one person to care for him. Just one. That's all he needed, but it wasn't happening. He should just forfeit. No one cared anyway. XXXXX Hinata had her Byakugan activated and she was focusing on Naruto. She saw his head hang in shame. She saw that he was thinking no one cared. She realized that he was about to forfeit. She saw it. She couldn't believe it. He had finally given up caring anymore. No. She couldn't allow this. She had to do something. She had to let him know that someone cared. Her. Not that anyone else cared what she thought, but maybe it would help him just to know that someone cared about him. But how could she do that when he was fighting her teammate? No, forget it, she had to let him know she cared. She gathered her courage. This was it, her one chance. She had to do something and do it now. She opened her mouth. XXXXX Naruto's hand was rising. It was the only part of him that was. He was ready to give up, seeing as no one cared how well he did anyway. They'd probably all be glad to see him give up. They all wanted him to fail. It didn't matter how hard he tried or how much effort he put into his life. No one noticed, no one cared. And his new technique would be wasted on his audience. They all wanted Kiba to win, so why not give them what they wanted? That's when he heard it. No, Naruto, don't give up. Everyone heard it. And everyone turned to look at the young girl who had suddenly screamed this. It was Hinata. Shy, quiet Hinata had just yelled out so loud that everyone in the arena had heard her. And Kiba was her teammate. How could she do that? And yet she had. She had cheered Naruto to beat her teammate. He turned and looked at Kiba. Okay, so one person did care. Kiba had stopped and was standing still in shock at Hinata's outburst. Naruto felt his confidence return along with his determination to win. He saw that Kiba wasn't going to be moving for a moment, so he took his chance. He formed a hand sign he was all too familiar with. Shadow Clone Jutsu. He yelled, and four clones appeared and circled Kiba. One clone rushed forward and delivered an uppercut to Kiba's jaw, sending him into the air. The original ran up that clone's back and jumped into the air, while the other three clones kicked Kiba higher. The original did a spinning kick into the back of Kiba's head, while yelling out, Naruto Barrage. Kiba was sent flying into the floor, face first. Upon contact, he was knocked out. Naruto landed a few feet away, panting heavily. He turned and looked up at Hinata, who was smiling at him. So she did care. She had really wanted him to win, and he had. It was all thanks to her. He saw her saying something, but couldn't hear her. He just knew what she said. Well done, Naruto. That's what she said. He knew it without hearing her. He owed her this win. He would return the favor to her somehow, he swore it. 
For now, he walked calmly to the ramp and back up to the balcony while Medical Ninja were removing Kiba on a stretcher. As he was passing Hinata, he stopped. Thank you Hinata. He smiled at her. She blushed. For what, Naruto, she asked him. When you cheered for me, I knew that someone cared. It gave me the confidence and the courage to keep fighting. Without you, I would have forfeited the match. I only won because of you. So, thank you. Then he looked up and saw the next names that were chosen for the next match. Hinata Hyuga vs Niji Hyuga. She followed his eyes and gasped. He saw her fear and whispered to her, Don't worry Hinata. I beat Kiba. You can beat Niji, too. She looked at him, smiled, blushed slightly, then nodded. Yes, she would beat Niji. For Naruto. As Hinata walked down the stairs to the arena floor, she saw Niji coming down from the other side. She looked up and met his eyes, hesitant and shy, as usual. She cursed herself for her weakness. She noticed something as she was coming down. Naruto had a single closed chakra point. She hadn't noticed before. Oh well, it didn't seem to be bothering him too much, but she wondered when it happened. Then Niji was before her, staring at her with that cold look in his eyes. As her pupil-less eyes met his, she saw hatred, of her, of the main branch, and of her father. She cringed, from his cold stare. Niji said to her, Hinata, withdraw from this match. You cannot fight against fate. And your fate was sealed the moment I was chosen as your opponent. You will lose this match unless you withdraw now. She shook her head, thinking of Naruto. I will not run from you. Not this day, cousin. He looked surprised, then she told him, this is the first time the one I admire, has been watching me. I will not fail, and I will not run, and I will not humiliate myself in front of him. Not today, not ever. So come at me, cousin. The two cousins activated their blood trait at the same time, veins bulging around their eyes. Then they charged. Niji and Hinata's battle was quite the sight to behold. Chakra flew everywhere. They seemed to land a glancing blow once in a while, but the chakra was what made it a sight to see. It was flying off every blow. And that was what made their gentle fist technique deadly, of course. Even a glancing blow could cause serious damage. Hinata was getting frustrated, her reach wasn't as long as Niji's, so every attack she did, he blocked easily, and she was having trouble even getting close to him. Then she spotted an opening, and she placed her hand directly on his chest. He froze. She grinned. She had him. Then he slowly rolled up her sleeve and she saw marks on her skin. Wait. He hadn't, had he? Apparently he had. Her arms had no chakra in them. The gentle fist had failed her. All she had done was touch him. He had closed the chakra points in both her arms. All of them. She backed away, frightened now. A inyang symbol appeared below Niji, then he charged at her. A trigram 64 palms, he yelled out, then started hitting Hinata, letting all his rage at the main house go into this one attack. Two palms. Four palms. Eight palms. Sixteen palms. Thirty-two palms. Sixty-four palms. As he said each one, he hit Hinata's chakra points till he'd gotten sixty-four of them at the end. They were all closed. He turned away from Hinata as she fell to the ground. He called up to Naruto. This will be your fate as well, loser. He started to walk away, as Hinata slowly regained her feet. She was in his blind spot and she knew it. If only she could have used her chakra, maybe she could have done something. Then she heard it. Don't give up Hinata. Fight him. It was Naruto. Kakashi tried to restrain the boy, but he called out to her, Hinata, look up here. She did. She saw that closed chakra point he had again. He saw her watching and said to her, you need to open them, Hinata. Do this. And as she watched, he forced a lot of chakra into the chakra point. So he had known it was closed. As she watched, to her amazement, his chakra point expanded and finally burst back open. He seemed to feel a twinge of pain, but he didn't seem to mind as it stayed open. Niji wasn't watching that, he had deactivated his Byakugan. His mistake, Hinata thought. She followed Naruto's example. 
With her much better chakra control, it didn't take long till all of her chakra points sprang back open. She gasped, but damn it, it worked. Niji still had his back to her, his Byakugan off, as he turned to tell Hei 8 to call the match. I don't think so, cousin. The 8 trigrams in Yang symbol appeared below Hanada now. He turned at her voice, and she saw him looking at her. She grinned and continued, your turn. 8 trigram 64 palms. And she rushed at him, doing the same combo of hits he had done to her just minutes before. She turned off every single one of his chakra points in a single move. He fell to the floor, unable to move. She looked at Hayate and told him, you can call the match now. He's done. Hayate agreed and called the match. Hinata had won. Before leaving, she walked over to Niji and held a hand out to him. He took it slowly, and she helped him to his feet. She told Niji, I know you think fate is what caused this, and that you struggle against your fate. Niji, before today, I had never used that move. Ever. He looked at her in shock. I told you, the one I admire was watching me. I wasn't about to give up in front of him. I did what I had to do. And it was him that allowed me to reopen my chakra points like that. While she was talking to him, she had moved them off the arena. She stopped at the bottom of the ramp. Then she looked at him and said quietly, I'm sorry for hurting you, cousin. He looked even more surprised. Then she extended a hand to him. Please, cousin, let's be friends, and together, we will fight your fate. I will get that seal removed from you one day, I swear it as a Huga. Niji was in shock. He had always thought the main branch members were nothing but his masters, yet here Hinata was, extending a hand in friendship and swearing to help him fight his fate and beat it. He slowly took her offered hand and nodded. Then she activated her Byakugan. He knew it. Now she was going to attack him again. But no, she extended her hand and touched him gently, barely even making contact. He looked at where she touched. Then she moved on. She was reopening his chakra points. He couldn't believe it. But she was. He smiled at her, a genuine smile, for the first time since his father died. Thank you, Lady Hinata. Just Hinata, cousin, please. As I said, we're friends now. This was just a show of faith. I trust you. He nodded to her, bowing slightly, as she continued, and no more bowing to me either. I told you, we're friends, equals. You are no longer my servant. He looked at her in shock, she just smiled. You are too kind, Hinata. Why are you so kind, after I have been so cruel? He wasn't blind to the way he had been. He just hadn't cared before this. You have been blinded, Niji. I know the reason you are so bitter, and I know the truth of it. Go, talk to my father, he will tell you now. Niji started to bow, but she shook her head, smiled, and pointed to where Hayashi was sitting. Niji made his way toward his uncle. When he arrived and asked about the truth of his father, Hisashi's death, Niji was presented with a scroll. He sat down in a seat and read his father's account of what happened. He looked up from it and got a third shock for that day. Hayashi Hyuga, head of the family, was on his knees, his forehead pressed to the floor. Forgive me, Niji. I'm sorry for keeping this from you for so long. Please, sir, don't bow to me. I'm sorry for being so bitter toward you all for so long. From this day forth, I swear to you, I will be a better family member to you all. Hayashi rose and smiled at Niji. Niji continued, and I will be as good a friend as I can to Lady Hinata. Hayashi jumped and looked at him in shock, but Niji just smiled and told him, she extended a hand to me in friendship. It is the least I can do to accept it. Hayashi smiled and nodded to Niji. Niji bowed a bit and the two parted, Niji returning to his team. Hinata, meanwhile, was on cloud nine. As she passed by Naruto, she had mustered up all her confidence and spoken to him. He had answered willingly and the two were now talking easily as they ignored the battle between Lee and Gara. Lee had knocked away Gara's gourd with one of his leaf hurricanes. After that, Naruto and Hinata had ignored it, talking easily to one another. Naruto smiled at Hinata and told her, thank you, by the way. She jumped and blushed. F for what, and Naruto? He grinned at her, for calling out to me when I was fighting Kiba. 
I was about to withdraw, but then you called out to me. It was knowing you cared that gave me the courage to keep fighting and to win against him. She smiled at him. I wanted you to win, Naruto. I have watched you for so long, and I've always admired you for your courage. She was surprised it had gotten so easy for her to talk to him, yet it had. Her stutter was as good as gone. She was about to continue when she noticed that Naruto's eyes were glazed over. Naruto was in his mindscape, in front of Kyuubi's cell. What the hell do you want, you damn fox, he yelled. Just wanted to tell you, brat, this girl is the one you should take. She's the one you're meant to be with. She's the one you'll bond to, and the one who will make your life complete. Now get out of here, and make sure she doesn't get away, the fox said, grinning his vulpine grin. Naruto shook his head as he came back to the real world. He smiled at Hinata, sorry about that. Please, continue. I was just going to say, thank you for showing me what you did. How did you get that chakra point closed, anyway? She was just curious about that. I closed it myself. I'm not sure how I did it, but I did. I've done that from time to time, so I've had to learn how to reopen them. That's why I did it when you were watching, so you'd see how. She smiled, I only won because of you, Naruto. Thank you. He grinned, thinking of what the fox had said, and said quietly, well, if you really want to pay me back, how about a date? She jumped, blushed red as a tomato, and stuttered, a a a d d d d date? He nodded. I thought you lll liked sssss Sakura. He sighed. He had liked Sakura. I did. But today, you showed me that you're the one who's been there for me. And I'd like to get to know you better. What do you say? She gasped. He was serious. She blushed even redder, then gasped out, yes, just before fainting. She came to a few minutes later, then blushed again when she found herself in Naruto's arms. He smiled at her, then helped her to her feet. She grinned at him, still feeling shy, but very very happy. I'd better get back to my team. When do you want to come get me for our date? She was stunned by the fact that she didn't stutter while saying that. How about tomorrow, say six? She grinned and nodded, then went back to her team. Naruto turned and saw Sakura giving him an evil eye. What? She pointed at Lee's fight. Lee was kicking Gara all over in the air, then suddenly he kicked him down, brought him back up, punched him hard and sent him flying into the ground. Without his sand, Gara didn't stand a chance. He was out. Hey eight, call the match. Lee had one. Everyone was shocked, but nonetheless happy for Lee. As it ended, Naruto looked back at Sakura, who was still glaring at him. What? Sakura, then Ino, then a few others came over and started telling Naruto that Hinata had been watching him since they started at the academy. He couldn't believe this, but they insisted it was true. But, that's four years, he gasped out. They nodded, and Sakura told him, exactly, Hinata has been waiting and hoping for this for four years. So you need to make an effort to make it special for her. Ino interrupted. Come by the shop tomorrow, I'll have a bouquet for you. He smiled and thanks. He hadn't thought of that. He did, however, know where he was going to take her. He just had to let her know to eat beforehand, they weren't going to have time for that. He grinned, thinking ahead. Hinata, across the arena, smiled, thinking of tomorrow night. Niji smiled at Hinata, sincerely, happy to have her as a friend. Hayashi smiled at Hinata, proud of his daughter. And Naruto thought of what a difference a single call could make. Naruto arrived at the Hyuga compound, holding a bouquet of lilies. Ino had explained that they symbolized devotion, and that they were Hinata's favorite flowers. That last bit in, and of itself, was enough of a reason for Naruto to agree to her choice. He had paid for them, suspecting Ino was giving him a discount, but he didn't mind that. It had taken Naruto a bit of doing to convince Hinata to let him pick her up at home. She was afraid her father wouldn't approve, but he had an idea. The night before. Bibi but, if you come to my home, father might. Hinata hesitated, not wanting to say what she was really afraid of. I know your father might see. That's exactly why I want to go there. She looked up at Naruto in surprise and confusion, but he continued, I intend to ask his permission to date you. I want to show him that I'm worthy of you, and that I have nothing to hide. And that's the best way I can think of to do it. They had been discussing this for about 20 minutes now, 
and Hinata kept trying to tell him she'd meet him somewhere else, but he was insistent. Well, if you're sure it's a good idea, Naruto. He grinned and nodded. I'm sure, Hinata. I don't want to hide this. I'm proud of you, as your father should be, and he should want you to be happy, so if he sees that I respect you and that I will treat you well, I doubt he'll object. Hinata blushed deeply, then finally smiled and nodded as well. Yes, Naruto, you're right. I don't want to have to hide it either. And you. Her voice trailed off, Naruto looked at her, waiting, then she finally said, quieter, just having you pay attention to me, makes me very happy, Naruto. He smiled. At the Hyuga compound. Naruto smiled, thinking back on that. He felt very optimistic about tonight. He walked up to the door and knocked. It opened a moment later, and there stood Niji. Naruto saw the suspicious look in Niji's eyes, and he almost fled, but he stood his ground. Good evening, Niji. Niji almost jumped when Naruto addressed him with respect. Naruto even bowed to him. Niji had a look that would rival Hinata's blush. Naruto grinned and asked, What, are you as much a fainter as Hinata? Niji tried to glower, but couldn't quite do it since he was still so surprised, instead, he opened the door further and gestured for Naruto to enter. Once he was inside, Niji closed the door, then asked, What can I do for you, Naruto? I was hoping to speak to Lord Hayashi, actually. While he was saying this, Naruto had set his bouquet down on a stand near the front door. Niji gave it an odd look, but Naruto didn't say anything about it. Niji bowed, rather awkwardly, then said, He is available, follow me please. With that, Niji walked down a nearby hallway. Naruto followed close behind. He heard Hinata's giggle as he passed one of the doors and knew she was there. He smiled. Then Niji stopped in front of a door, turned and looked Naruto up and down. Suddenly he realized something and had to ask. Where's your old jumpsuit, Naruto? Oh, right, that, I bought this last night. He was dressed in a three-piece suit, all of it jet black. He had actually gone alone the night before and bought it. It wasn't tailored to him, but it looked as if it were. You'll see why I'm wearing it soon, Niji, don't worry. Niji let that go, and knocked on the door. Yes? A voice came from the room behind the door. Lord Hayashi, you have a visitor, Niji said in his servant role. All right, show them in. Naruto was surprised Niji hadn't mentioned who he was, but Niji just opened the door and entered before Naruto. May I present Naruto Uzumaki, Sir Niji gave a small gesture for Naruto to enter, and he did. Naruto bowed low to Hayashi, Niji then bowed and took his leave. Hayashi visibly jumped in surprise, not only at the name, but at Naruto's behavior. Well, this is certainly a surprise, Naruto. Hayashi's face showed no emotion, as usual. Inside, he was rather shaken by this development and insanely curious. What can I do for you, young man? Naruto straightened and stood straight, looking at Hayashi. I have come to you tonight to ask you a favor, Lord Hayashi. Hayashi couldn't quite contain a jump at this. Not only because the young man was being so polite, but he was asking a favor of him and calling him Lord, all of which he knew this boy in particular almost never did. And what favor could I do for you, Naruto? He was even more curious now, since this was obviously something the boy wanted badly, if he was going to all this effort. I have come to ask your permission to date your daughter, Sir Naruto bowed again, deeper than before. Hayashi didn't realize what Naruto meant. His immediate thought was that Naruto meant Hanabi, which of course, Hayashi would refuse. He rose from his seat and almost yelled, she is several years your junior. Why in the world would you date her? Naruto looked at him in confusion, and replied, she's the same age as me, sir, what do you mean? Hayashi almost yelled again, then stopped. Maybe he didn't mean Hanabi. Which daughter are you referring to, Naruto? Naruto looked almost as confused as Hayashi felt by now, but answered, Hinata, of course. Hayashi sat back down. Then he remembered something. Hinata had mentioned to him in passing that she had often hoped Naruto would notice her. Hayashi smiled. It seemed Naruto had finally done so. He couldn't help smiling at his daughter's fortune. She had earned the respect of himself, Niji, and her crush in the same day. He sat back and grinned, then decided to have some fun with the young boy. I'm afraid I have to refuse. 
Naruto looked at him in shock, but Hayashi continued, hiding his smile carefully, unless, of course, you would be willing to show me you are worthy of my daughter. Naruto looked slightly afraid, but nodded, asking, what do I have to do, sir? Hayashi smiled, it is customary in the Hyuga clan, to only allow people who have taken blood oaths, to date our heirs, or heiresses. He was making this up off the cuff, but he rather liked the idea. You would have to swear to never leave her, hurt her, or in any way cause her any mental or physical pain or anguish. And of course, if you broke this oath, your life would be forfeit immediately. He fully expected Naruto to tell him he was crazy, so the result he got shocked him. Naruto immediately bit his thumb and inscribed in blood a symbol on his chest, which he had quickly bared, over his heart. He held up his hand and said, I, Naruto Uzumaki, hereby swear to never leave Hinata Hyuga, to never hurt her, to never cause her any pain or anguish, and to always be there for her. If I break this vow, my life will end immediately. The blood on his chest glowed, then sank into his skin. Hayashi's jaw dropped. Naruto just grinned and asked, will that suffice, sir? He then replaced his shirt and jacket, waiting for Hayashi to answer. I'm sorry, Naruto, I didn't mean for you to actually do that. I never intended to refuse you. However, you have shown me that you truly desire Hinata's happiness, and that makes you more than worthy of her. However, you do realize what you have just vowed essentially amounts to a wedding vow. Naruto nodded. Are you sure you want to do that, when you have not even gone on a date with her yet? He nodded again. I'm sure, Sir Hinata is precious to me, and I will protect her with my life. Hayashi nodded. Then I suppose I should go and get my daughter, shouldn't I? Naruto smiled, then bowed again. That would be very kind of you, Lord Hayashi. Wait for us at the front door, please, Hayashi said, then arose. I will bring her to you in a few moments, once she's ready. Thank you sir, Naruto bowed, then exited the audience chamber and went back to the front door, where he retrieved his bouquet and stood to wait for Hanada. Niji was still there, and looked at him curiously. What is that bouquet for, Naruto? Niji had had enough and couldn't help asking. It's for Hanada. Niji looked surprised and got that fainting look back as Naruto continued, it's for our date tonight. So that's why you wanted to speak to my uncle. Naruto nodded. And I assume you got permission, seeing as you're still here, alive, breathing, and conscious. Naruto nodded again. With Hinata. She had heard Naruto talking to Niji, and had giggled and blushed, excited about tonight, but also afraid her father would say no. Then she heard her father's door open and close again, ten minutes later, then again a minute after. Then she heard a knock on her own door, and her father's voice rang out. Hinata, may I come in? Of course, father. Her door opened, and her father came in. She looked up at him and saw the stern look on his face. She hadn't heard the front door, but from the look on his face, she guessed he had told Naruto no. He came over and sat down on the seat by her bed. She hesitated, then asked, what can I do for you, father? I just had a rather interesting visit with Naruto Uzumaki, he told her. Yes? She was afraid of this. And what was it about, father? He came to ask my permission to date you, as I suspect you already knew. She blushed, then nodded. Of course, I refused. She looked away from him to hide the tears in her eyes. Hayashi smiled affectionately at his daughter, then continued, I refused, at first. She looked up at him, hope on her face. What do you mean, father? I mean I refused, at first. Then, well, he changed my mind. He smiled at her. Suddenly her face, brightened. Thank you, father. She cried out happily, then ran over and hugged him hard. He hugged her back softly, then sat her back, down on her bed, and said, you'd better get ready, don't you think? She nodded. Then she had a thought, how did he change your mind father? Ask him, he said, then left her room. He looked back before he closed the door. I'll be right here to take you to him once you're ready. She blushed at that thought, but smiled happily as he closed the door. She had already chosen her outfit for the night, so all she had to do was get into it. She had showered not long ago, so it didn't take her long to come out of her room. Her father smiled at her as she came out. You look beautiful, daughter. She smiled at him. He held out an arm to her, which she took and he escorted her out to where her date was waiting. With Naruto.
Naruto and Niji were talking about the training that was ahead of them, when they both heard steps coming toward them. Niji was the first to look and see Hayashi and Hinata together. His jaw dropped when he saw the long dress she was wearing. It went down to below her knees, and was solid black, with a plaited skirt. Naruto saw her a moment later and smiled. He rose and bowed to both of them. You look beautiful, Hinata. He smiled at her as she blushed from his compliment. You look very handsome, Naruto, she said softly, smiling back. Then he held out the bouquet of wall lilies he had gotten from Ino. She took them, smiling. My favorite. How did you know? I didn't. Ino told me. She smiled at his honesty and at the choice. Not only were lilies her favorite flower, they symbolized devotion, so of course she was happy at the choice Ino had made, and that Naruto had agreed. Then Hayashi held out his arm, with her other hand, and Naruto held out his hand, she took it, smiling at the formality. Shall we go? he asked her. She smiled up at Naruto, and nodded quietly. She handed the bouquet to Niji, asking him if he'd put them in a vase for her. He nodded, and walked off to get one. Have a good time tonight, you too, Hayashi said, smiling at them. Have her back before midnight, Naruto. Naruto bowed to him, and said, yes, sir. Then they were outside. Hinata was still surprised by this turn of events. She looked up at Naruto, who smiled at her. She asked him, how did you change father's mind? Naruto looked surprised. I'll tell you when we get to where we're going, all right? She nodded. And we'd better get going, or we're not going to have time to do all we have on the schedule for tonight. She grinned, pulling herself closer to him, both her arms wrapped around the one of his that she'd been holding onto since her father had passed her to him. He was surprised, but pleased, and smiled at her. I'm really glad I asked you to come out with me tonight, Hinata. She blushed and smiled. So where are we going, Naruto? You ate already, right? She nodded. Well, first, I thought I'd take you out for dessert. With that, he headed toward a nearby bakery. She smiled, but hesitated. Are you sure you can afford this place, Naruto? Naruto nodded, then told her, this place is owned by a friend of Tuchi's, from over at Ichiraku. He said to drop his name here, and the guy would take care of me. So they entered. Hinata smiled as Naruto went to the counter and gave his name and Tuchi's. The owner came out and smiled. You must be the young man Tuchi told me about. I've got your order ready, right here. So saying, he pulled a large covered tray out from under the counter. The aroma was enough to make Hinata's mouth water. Naruto handed the man some money, but he gently handed it back, saying, Don't worry, this is on Tuchi. Naruto looked surprised, but the man said, Tuchi told me if you came in here with a young lady, he'd cover your expenses. Naruto didn't want to accept this, but saw he had no choice. The man added, Tuchi said to have you stop by and introduce your young lady, that's all he requires and pay for it. Naruto nodded. They headed out of the door, and Hinata commented, that was nice of Tuchi. Naruto nodded, then asked, would you mind stopping by there first? It's the least we can do, since he's paying for this. Hinata smiled, then told him, I'll go anywhere, Naruto. So long as I'm with you, I'm happy. Naruto smiled and led her toward Ichirakus. On the way there, Naruto had a thought and started giggling. It got worse and worse, till he had to stop and calm down so that he could breathe. Hinata looked at him curiously, and he told her, I just happened to think, this will be the first time I've ever gone to Ichirakus without actually eating anything. But just having you with me more than makes up for it. She smiled at him. That was high praise indeed, coming from him. Then she took his hand directly in hers, and they continued on their way to Ichirakus, both of them smiling, peacefully. When they arrived at the ramen stand, Naruto lifted the half-curtains out of the way and stepped inside, Hinata with him. He called out, Hey old man. There's someone here, I'd like you to meet. Tuchi looked over at them. Naruto. Hey. And who's this young lady you've got with you? I'm Hinata Hyuga, said young lady answered, then blushed. Tuchi grinned, on your first date, huh, Naruto? Naruto nodded proudly and Hinata blushed even redder. Tuchi smiled at her, you look very lovely, young lady. She almost fainted, but fought it off. Thank you, sir, she said, curtsying to him. 
Just then, Ayam came out as well. And who do we have here? She asked, smiling at Hinata. I'm Hinata Huga, Hinata said for the second time, curtsying to Ayam as well. It's nice to meet you, Hinata. Then she turned to Naruto and decided to needle him. On your first date, huh? He nodded proudly. You treat her well, Naruto. A lovely young lady like this deserves it. He nodded again. I'd never do anything else, I am. They smiled at one another and I am winked at Hinata, who of course, blushed again. I went to that bakery you told me about, and he said you'd be covering the bill as long as I came by and introduced you to my date, Naruto jumped in. Tucci nodded. Thanks, old man. This really means a lot to me. Tucci and I am smiled at their favorite customer. Either of you want anything? I'd be honored to serve at your first date, Tucci said, smiling. No thanks, old man. We've already eaten dinner. And we're on a kinda tight schedule, so we need to get going, Naruto told him, looking somewhat chagrined. Tucci smiled. He wasn't hurt. Well hey, you have to bring her by here sometime. Naruto grinned and nodded as Tucci added, it'll be a pleasure to get to know your young lady as well. Thanks, old man. Well, we better get going. With that, Naruto bowed to the two of them, and Hinata curtsied again as they left the shop. Those two make a cute couple, Tucci and I am thought at the same time. They smiled, truly happy for Naruto. Naruto turned to Hinata and asked her, ready? She nodded and he said, come on then. Ten minutes later. Naruto and Hinata arrived atop the fourth Hokage's head, atop the mountainside images. Naruto had his hands over Hinata's eyes, to surprise her. She smiled, leaving her Byakugan off, so as not to ruin it. As they arrived, he removed his hands, and Hinata gasped. There was a table set up, with a checkered cloth covering it and a single candle lighting the area. She looked at her crush and he grinned at her, setting down the tray on the table. Then he came over and led her to one of the chairs and pulled it out for her. She smiled and sat down. He went around the table and sat across from her, then removed the lid from the tray. The aroma was making both their mouths water. Suddenly, Hinata realized what it was. Cinnamon rolls. How did you know, Naruto? She couldn't believe this. First lilies, her favorite flower. Now her favorite food, too. Was he reading her mind or something? He grinned. I asked Niji. He told me they're your favorite, so of course that's what I got. And I had the baker make them extra sweet, just for you. She couldn't believe this. Extra sweet was just how she liked them. Naruto reached over and cut the rolls. There were six of them in the tray, but they weren't small. He handed her one and took one for himself. Then he reached over and took her free hand gently in his, even though this meant he was eating left-handed. She smiled at his touch, then took her first bite and almost fainted from the taste. It was just that good. She loved it. With Naruto, this setting, all of it combined, it just seemed like a dream, a dream that was too good to be true, and yet here they were. She watched him take his first bite, somewhat slower than she had been, and as he chewed, she watched his face brighten. Wow, these are really good. I've never had them before. Naruto exclaimed, smiling. Hearing that, Hinata realized what was going on. Naruto had set all this up, bought her flowers, brought her to his special place, and bought her favorite food, even though he'd never even had them before. Wow. He was really going all out for her. She blushed at the thought, and tears of joy sprang to her eyes. Something wrong, Hinata, he asked her. I was just thinking about everything you've done for me tonight. My favorite flowers, my favorite food, bringing me up here to your special place, that new outfit. You really are doing a lot to make this night memorable for me. And you even asked my father's permission to date me. She got up, walked over to him, and before she could lose her nerve, bent down to him and kissed him softly. Thank you, Naruto. He smiled, blushing slightly in surprise. I wanted this to be the best night of your life, Hinata. So I found out about you, your favorite food, your favorite flowers, and I wanted to look good for you, so I dressed up, too. And as for your father, that was easy. I just wanted tonight to be special for you. She smiled, sitting back down, then remembered what her father had said about Naruto changing his mind. So, how did you change father's mind, Naruto? You said you'd tell me when we got here, so tell me. 
As she was talking, Naruto had cut and handed her a second roll, seeing that she'd finished her first. He had only eaten half of his first. Well, your father told me there was a custom in your clan for when someone is dating the heir or heiress. He said it involved a blood oath to never leave them, hurt them, cause them any mental or physical pain or anguish, and to always be there for them. And that if the oath was broken, being a blood oath, the person's life would be forfeit. She looked surprised, realizing this was her father's way of toying with Naruto, but then he continued. I bit my thumb, marked my heart, and took the oath on the spot. Now she looked shocked. When I did that, he said I had shown that I truly desire your happiness, and that doing so made me more than worthy of you. Naruto, you know there is no such tradition, right? He nodded at her question. Your father told me that after I had done it. I don't think he expected me to do it, but I don't care. I was happy to do that for you. She smiled, blushing deep red. Then he continued, your father told me after I did it, that the vow I had just taken was essentially a wedding vow, and asked me if I was okay with that. I told him it was fine. She looked surprised. He added, I meant that, too. I'm more than happy to vow to make you happy. As I told him, I'll protect you with my life, Hinata. She blushed, smiling. Are you sure about that, Naruto? I mean, we're only twelve, and you hardly even know me. She was almost afraid to say that, but it was true, and she thought it better to get it out now rather than waiting. I'm sure, Hinata. I know I don't know you yet, but that will change. I'll take as many hours, days, weeks, or even years as it takes, to get to know you. And I do realize you've always been there for me, so I know you're worth the time. He smiled at her, making her blush at this. Naruto, thank you. Think nothing of it, Hinata. Then he had a thought. Actually, you want to make it up to me? She looked slightly confused, then nodded. All right, then I have an idea. He leaned over and whispered something in her ear. She blushed, but liked the idea, so she nodded. It would take them months to pull off his idea, but they smiled at one another and started making plans right away. A short time later, they sat together and watched the sunset. After it had completely disappeared, they finished the roll they each had, and Naruto put the lid back on the tray, which still had three rolls in it, and handed it to Hinata. You can have the ones that are left, Hinata. You like them more than I do. She smiled and blushed. Naruto had to ask, why are you always blushing around me, Hinata? Well, it's just that I've always wanted you to acknowledge me, and when you talk to me, I feel so shy, so I usually end up feeling embarrassed and blushing. Why, does it bother you? He shook his head as they were walking away, he looked back and released the shadow clones he had, the table, chairs, candle, and cloth all vanished. He laughed to himself, thinking how easy that cleanup was, then he escorted Hinata back home. When they arrived, he knocked on the door. While they waited, he kissed Hinata's lips gently, so that when Lord Hayashi opened the door, she was blushing like mad. He bowed to her father, and said, I have returned your daughter to you, as per our agreement, sir, he smiled and held a hand out to Hinata, who took it gently, then turned back to Naruto. Good night, Hinata. I'll see you soon. Naruto bowed. Good night, Naruto. I look forward to seeing you again soon. She curtsied to him. Naruto stood, then said, by the way, Hinata, how about we meet at the training ground tomorrow? I have something to show you. What time? She asked him. Oh, say, noon? That way we can train on our own in the morning, and have the afternoon to train together? She looked at her father, who nodded. Yes, Naruto. I'll see you at noon tomorrow. They shared a smile, Naruto bowed to her and her father, then the door closed gently between them, and Naruto went home. He slept well that night, smiling as he dreamed. With Hinata. How was your date, Hinata? Hayashi asked after Naruto was gone. It was great, father. I think this was the best night of my life, she said, smiling at her father. Then Niji came up, having heard her. Thank you father, and you too, Niji. Niji looked confused, so she explained what had happened, telling them both everything. Her two family members smiled at her, then she curtsied to both, saying she was tired and should get to bed. Suddenly, she remembered the rolls and handed them to her father. 
she explained they were the leftovers, and that she wanted to save them for breakfast the next day. He nodded and told her he'd take them to the kitchen for her. With that, she curtsied once more and practically skipped to her room. As she lay there, drifting to sleep, her mind went over all that had happened that day. She had never felt so happy. She had had her first date, her first kiss, and both with Naruto. She fell asleep, smiling happily. Neither she nor Naruto realized it, but both of them fell into sleep at the exact same moment. Naruto was waiting for Hinata at the training ground. He was early. This was rare for him, but not unheard of. This time, though, he was over two hours early. He wanted time to practice what he was going to show Hinata. He hoped she'd like it. It was something he'd been working on for a long time now. But now, suddenly, he was nervous. After all, he had never shown it to anyone before. Then again, this wasn't a battle. He was just doing something for a friend. Or, was she more? No, he chided himself, this was not the time to think of that. He now only had a little while, half an hour or so, to practice before she got there. Where had the time gone? He had only tried a few times to do his little trick for Hanada. It had worked, but it wasn't perfect. He wanted to have it just right for her. Oh well, he'd gotten pretty lucky with her so far, and she didn't seem to mind when he slipped, so this time would be no exception, right? Still, he was worried. After all, she was the first one to really acknowledge him, and he sure as hell didn't want to lose that. Not now, not ever. He concentrated harder than ever, trying for the third time to do his jutsu. The one he had designed for her. He almost had it. Just one more try, and it should be perfect. He wouldn't have it any other way. For her. With Hinata. Hinata was working hard, training with her father. He was hard, but kind. He smiled at her as she tagged his shoulder and shut down his right arm. She grinned back, proud of herself. They bowed to one another as her father fixed his arm. She checked the time. She had about another hour before she had to leave to meet Naruto. She was so glad her father had accepted the young man. Then she remembered how harsh Hayashi had always seemed before. Suddenly, she had to know what had happened. He had changed when her mother died. She bowed to her father again, then spoke. Father, would you mind if we took a break a while? I'd like to talk to you about something. Hayashi was slightly taken aback by this. Hinata almost never requested things of him like that, yet when she did, he could rarely tell her no. He nodded and they walked to the steps at the edge of the arena, sat down, and picked up the tea that was waiting for them there. Each of them made a mental note to thank Hanabi later. After drinking a short time to calm and relax themselves, Hayashi turned to Hanada. He was intrigued by her earlier statement. So, Hanada, what was it you wanted to ask me? He guessed at that. She hadn't said it was a question, but he knew her. She turned to him, but then looked down. What she was about to say to him wasn't exactly flattering, and she was somewhat afraid to bring it up. Then she looked up and saw her father smiling softly, and she felt her confidence rise, as it always did when he smiled like that. She smiled back, then said softly, so no one, but he would hear, it's about when mother died. He looked surprised, but gestured for her to continue. She did. Before mother died, you were always so cold, so distant. Then after she died, you started getting warm and caring, and you and I got closer really quickly after that. I was wondering, what happened? Hayashi looked startled, and Hinata was about to withdraw the question, but he held his hand up. She felt quiet. Hayashi smiled softly to let her know she hadn't done anything wrong. Then he said, softly, I think it's time you found out what happened, Hinata. But first, how long do you have, before you meet your date? I have about an hour before I should leave, father. He smiled, that was more than enough time to tell her, so long as she wasn't asking a ton of questions or interrupting all the time, which he doubted would happen anyway. I think that should be sufficient. He sat back and closed his eyes, letting the memories come to him. He smiled as the memories of his wife came to his mind. It was just after Hanabi was born, Hayashi started. Hinata waited, clinging on his every word. Hayashi heard his wife was finally awake, but was not well. He went into her room immediately to see her. 
She looked up at him weakly, and he took her hand. He truly loved her. He had for a long time now. I'm not going to make it, she spoke softly, smiling. She was at peace, he realized. You're going to leave me? He asked her, hoping she'd say no, but she nodded, and he knew she was really going to die. He could see her life force with his Byakugan, and it was dim and getting weaker, by the moment. He knew she'd be gone within the week. Then, he realized that this day was the last time he would speak to her. He gathered up his nerve, something he hadn't had to do for some years, and asked her, what would you have me do, my love? She smiled again, then took his hand in hers weakly, before answering, you are always cold to our daughter. For me, my love, change the way you treat her. Be kind, train her, make her strong, but allow her to remain kind. Accept that in her. She is like me, and like me, she deserves your love. Give that to her, and to Hanabi as well. Love them, for me, as I will not be there for them. Be there for them in my place. Hayashi stiffened. He wasn't very good at showing emotion with anyone but his wife, and here she was, asking him to open up and be caring, gentle, loving, and kind to their daughters. But this was her last request, and he saw in her eyes that she wouldn't back down. She was so strong, even in this moment of final weakness. That's why he loved her so. Along with her kindness, she was very strong. Her gentleness did not make her weaker, either. Titi actually seemed to make her stronger. He knelt by her, and told her, I will do what you have asked. I will change, take your kindness to myself and show it to Hanada and Hanabi. She smiled and closed her eyes. He knew it was time for him to go, so he did. It was, as he thought, the last time he would ever see his wife. So, Hanada, you see, I am doing this because your mother requested it. I have always loved you, but I never knew how to tell you so. After your mother requested that, I knew I had to do it, so ever since then, I have thought of what she would do, and have done it myself. I'm just sorry I didn't show you my love from the start. Hinata smiled, happy that her mother had been thinking of her and her sister even in her final moments. Of course, she forgave her father instantly for having trouble showing how he felt before. She ran around the table to him and wrapped her arms around him. He hugged her back, and both were happy that they were so open, so close to one another now. Each one smiled, neither knowing that the other was. Hayashi still had his eyes closed so as not to weep at the memories of his wife, and Hinata had her head on his shoulder, relaxed and safe in her father's arms. Eventually, Hinata pulled back and smiled at her father, who smiled back. On impulse, she did something she hadn't done since she was a tiny baby. She kissed him. Hayashi returned it, but was surprised. Pleasantly so, but still, he hadn't expected that. He smiled wider at her, then whispered, I love you, Hinata. And I'm very proud of you. Hinata smiled and hugged him again. I love you, too, father. She hugged him tightly as he held her and rubbed her back. They both felt the same way. Happy, open, safe together. All too soon, Hinata saw what time it was and pulled away again. I should go get ready. I'm meeting Naruto soon. Hinata. Hayashi said softly, and Hinata stopped and looked at him. You want to marry that boy, don't you? Hinata blushed deeply, but nodded. She did desire Naruto. Always had. Hayashi looked at her and asked, if I arranged for it, would you be happy? Hinata jumped, looking at her father. It slowly sank in what he meant. He did have the power to arrange a marriage between her and Naruto, as her father and as clan head. She blushed, then whispered, I'll need some time to think about it. He nodded. I understand, Hinata. Just think it through. It's not like you're even of age yet. But understand that if you desire to marry him, having it arranged would be the best way to make sure it happens. She nodded, then bowed. I should go, father. I don't want to keep him waiting. I'll think on this, and give you an answer as soon as I can. Hayashi nodded. Have a good time, Hinata. I love you. Neither of them knew it, but that was going to be a routine with them from now on. They had gotten closer, more open now. Hinata smiled. I love you, too, father. She bowed again, then left, smiling, peacefully. Hayashi smiled, thinking of how much like her mother she looked. He realized, once again, that she and Hanabi were all that was left of his wife, and so he must treasure them and keep them safe and happy. 
He smiled at the thought. He had found his precious people again, and he knew that he would always protect them, with his life if necessary. With Naruto. Naruto smiled. He had finally gotten his jutsu right. He was ready for when Hinata got there, and she was scheduled to be there in about 10 minutes. He smiled. That gave him just enough time to have plenty of chakra to do the jutsu again when she got there. He sat down at the base of a nearby tree and leaned his head back, relaxing. He had only been there for a few minutes when he heard her soft steps approaching. He kept his eyes closed, smiling, waiting for her to approach him on her own terms. He seemed to be asleep, but he wasn't. He forced the smile from his face so she'd think he was asleep. He wanted to see what she'd do. With Hinata. She came into the clearing, looking around for the boy she admired. She almost concluded he wasn't there, and was going to go sit down to wait when she spotted him. He seemed to be asleep, leaning against a tree. She licked her lips at the sight of him, then scolded herself for her thoughts. She shouldn't be licking her lips at the sight of him. Well, not yet anyway. Maybe someday. But not yet. She walked over and crouched down in front of him, observing how he looked in sleep. She suddenly realized he wasn't asleep, but he wanted her to think he was. She decided to play along. Then she wondered how she should wake him. She got on her knees by him, put her hands on his shoulders, and was leaning forward to kiss him. She knew he was awake, but she wanted to surprise him anyway. She was leaning in, and she fully meant to kiss him to wake him. But just when she was about to make contact, he brought his arms around her and pulled her to him, kissing her tenderly. She kissed back willingly, happily. They pulled back from one another, smiling at one another lovingly. Hey there, Naruto said. I was waiting for you. I see that. I thought you were asleep at first, but then I saw you shifting and I knew you were awake. I just wanted to surprise you, she told him, smiling. He smiled back, then she remembered why they had met there. You said you wanted to show me something? He smiled and nodded. I made a jutsu, he told her. He didn't know how he had thought up this jutsu, but he wanted her to be the first to see it. He wouldn't use it if he had to battle her, so it didn't matter if she saw it before the finals of the exams. At first, he could only make it into a sphere, but that wasn't what he was going to show her now. I've been practicing this for a while, and I wanted to show it to you. And don't worry, if we have to battle in the finals, I won't use this on you. She smiled at that, realizing this must be one strong technique for him to say that. But she was also happy he wanted her to see it. He held out his hand and gathered his chakra. She activated her Byakugan at first so she could see what he was doing. He was bringing his chakra together and causing it to spin really fast. That's all she needed her bloodline trait for, so she turned it off. As she watched, he formed the spinning ball of chakra into a heart. He smiled, holding it in front of him. Wow, Naruto, that's beautiful. He nodded. It's beautiful, but powerful. He turned away and shoved the ball of chakra into a stone, which was ground into dust around it. Then he pulled it out, and it wasn't even scathed. Hinata, you know how to hold chakra in your hands, right? She nodded, wondering what he had in mind. Come here. She walked over to him and he held the ball out to her. She held up her hand, knowing he wanted her to, but not yet sure why. He gently slid his hand under hers so the heart of chakra was in her hand, then pulled his hand away, leaving it in her hand. She looked at him, confused. With this heart of chakra, I, Naruto, give you my heart. I vow to love you always, Hinata. And I vow to never hurt you or leave you. I am yours, from now till forever. He smiled, waiting for her reaction. She slowly allowed the chakra heart to dispel. As it dispelled, she felt the chakra spiraling into her. She smiled at the power and at his words. Once the jutsu was totally dispelled, she ran to him and wrapped her arms around him. He hugged her back, then asked her, Hinata, will you be my girlfriend? She nodded happily, then thought back to her conversation with her father. I will, Naruto. They smiled at one another, then she gestured for him to sit down. He did and she sat with him. She pulled out some food she'd brought with her, consisting of rice, dumplings, and some vegetable dish. He looked surprised. 
I made us lunch, she explained, and they sat down to eat. Ten minutes later. Wow, Hinata, this is really good. He smiled at her as they finished their lunch. Thank you. I wanted to, Naruto. It made me happy to cook for you. She blushed prettily. You made all this? She nodded. Wow. I'm impressed, Hinata, really. You're going to make someone one heck of a wife someday. He grinned, not even thinking of himself being that, someone. This, naturally, made Hinata think even more of what her father had said. She decided to tell him. What if, what if it was you, she asked. He looked surprised, then curious, so she continued, telling him about what her father had said. He looked nervous at the idea of an arranged marriage, then smiled. He'd be happy to be with her. If that's what it took, and if that would make her happy, he'd do it. Without a second thought, he'd do it. Do you want that, Hinata? he asked her. Would it make you happy, if your father arranged for us to be married? She looked surprised. No one had ever asked her her opinion for anything like this before. She thought a moment, then told him, Yes, Naruto, I want to marry you. But I don't want you to feel forced, or like you have to for me. I don't. I want to marry you, too. And if it will make you happy, I'll certainly say yes, if your father approaches me. She nodded, then told him, I'll tell father tonight, then. Just, please, don't tell him I told you. He nodded. I won't say anything to him, Hinata. And of course I'll tell him yes. But first, one thing. He held out his hand and formed a small chakra ball, very small, like the heart from before, but tiny and round, then he hollowed it out, so that it was like a ring. He got down on his knees, and Hinata's breath caught as she realized what he was doing. Hinata Huga, will you marry me? He asked her, holding the chakra ring up to her. She had never been happier. She slid her finger into the ring, and said, Yes, Naruto Uzumaki, I will marry you. As she said this, the ring dispelled itself into her, becoming part of her. There was a small mark around her finger, where the ring had been. I'll get you a real ring when I can. She nodded at his assertion. She really was happier than she'd ever been. She was engaged to him, but no one could know yet. Soon, she thought to herself. Soon, everyone would know. She was slightly surprised that he was so willing to move so fast, but she didn't care. She was happy. But she had to ask. Why are you so willing to commit to me, so wholly, so fast, she asked him. She saw a flicker, pass his eyes. Are you sure about asking that, Hinata? She nodded. I'm willing to do this because you're the first person to acknowledge me and accept me, and I'm not going to lose that, no matter what. They smiled at one another, then he continued. You've made me feel worthwhile, Hinata, and I promise I'll do everything I can to make that become love. And once it is, I'll always love you, and I'll never leave you. She smiled and blushed at the praise. I should be getting home. Father will be worried. Could you walk me home, Naruto? Of course, Hinata. He helped her pack up the dishes from lunch and handed her her pack, then he took her hand gently and led her home, happy with how close they were to one another. Ten minutes later, at the Huga compound, Naruto approached the door and knocked loudly. He kissed Hinata softly as they waited. She blushed, and he laughed at how easily he had done this to her twice now. He decided then and there that whenever he was dropping her off, he would do this. It was so cute watching her blush. Then the door opened, and Hayashi was there. He grinned at his daughter's blush, guessing it was for the same reason as last time. He held out his hand. Naruto handed Hinata's hand to her father, who took it gently, and bowed to the man, saying, I have again returned your daughter to you safely, sir. Hayashi smiled and said, Indeed you have, young man. Naruto smiled and said, See you tomorrow, Hinata? She blushed, then nodded. I'll make us lunch this time. She smiled. And I'll see you soon as well, Lord Hayashi? I suspect so, Naruto. He turned to his daughter. Hinata, I need to speak to Naruto in private a moment. Hinata nodded and left them, escaping into the building. Hayashi addressed Naruto again. Do me one favor, Naruto. What can I do for you, sir? From now on, when you bring Hinata home, always make sure to hand her over to me personally. I want to see to her safety. 
I trust you, but once she's here, make sure to give her to me and only me, okay? Naruto bowed. I will, sir, and I thank you for trusting me with your daughter. I will always honor her and you. He bowed again. Thank you, Naruto. Lord Hayashi bowed slightly. I'll see you tomorrow then, after your date. Naruto nodded, then bowed again. I take my leave then, Sir Hayashi nodded, and Naruto left, headed for home. With Hinata. Hinata had gone to her bedroom and was sitting on her bed. She wondered what her father had wanted with Naruto, but she knew it wasn't about the arranged marriage he had offered her, so she didn't think much about it. After a few minutes, she heard a knock on her door. Come in. She called. She was only slightly surprised when her father entered and sat in a seat by her. What can I do for you, father? Have you thought about what I asked you before you left this morning, Hinata? She nodded shyly. And? Father, I would like you to ask Naruto if he'll consent to an arranged marriage with me. He was surprised by this, but he didn't show it. But, please, don't force him into it. I don't want him to feel like he has to. He calmed at that. He knew his daughter well, and he knew she wouldn't want him to marry her out of obligation, pity, or because of anything he had done. I will see what I can do, Hinata. Just, please, don't get your hopes up too much. As you have requested, I won't force him. I hope for your sake, for your happiness, that he says yes. But Hinata, make me one promise. She looked at him, waiting. If he says yes, you must promise to do everything in your power to make sure he spends the rest of his life in happiness. Hinata smiled. I will make no such promise to you, father. But to him, I will make that promise the day he and I are married. Hayashi smiled and nodded. Well spoken, daughter. It is him, after all, that you must make the promise to, not me. My happiness or lack thereof will not change based on what you do with him. But I'm glad you said this, and I hope for both your sake and his, that he says yes. The next day, after Naruto and Hinata stayed at the Hubik compound, Naruto had knocked on the door, and it was opened immediately by Hayashi. He was slightly disappointed he hadn't gotten the chance to make her blush that day, but he decided to let it pass. Hayashi smiled at the young couple, then addressed Naruto, Could you accompany me to my office, young man? I have something to speak to you about. Naruto nodded, handed over Hinata, then followed him to the clan head's office. He stood before Hayashi's desk, waiting to see what this was about, though he thought he knew already. Hayashi sat down and started to rearrange a few papers on his desk, till he found the one he was looking for, a marriage contract. He grinned at Naruto, thinking the wait would have made the young man nervous, but was surprised at the calm aura the young man exuded. He had to regain his composure somewhat before he could address the calm young man. Naruto, I have asked you to come here to make a proposition to you. Naruto nodded, waiting, letting Hayashi address this how he saw fit. I propose to arrange for you and Hinata to be married when she comes of age. Do you accept? He looked at Naruto, hope and fear warring on his face. Naruto decided to get Hayashi back for his prank when he had been asking permission to date Hinata. He grinned his prankster grin behind his hands, then said, And what would be in it for me, Lord Hayashi? Aside from having Hinata as your partner, you would be the de facto head of the Hugo when I pass, along with her, of course. She would be the true head, but if you know her as I do, she would share her power with you. Also, you would inherit my fortune as her partner, so you would be rich beyond your wildest dreams. Beyond that, you'll have a very high status within the village as part of our clan, and you'll get the respect you've always wanted. I'd see to that. Naruto almost laughed. For some, this would be enough to convince them, even if they didn't care for Hinata at all. But Naruto contained himself and responded, I'm not interested in any of that, Lord Hayashi. Hayashi looked at him, shocked. No amount of money, respect, status, nor any other worldly consideration could convince me to marry Hinata. Hayashi's face fell. He had been afraid of this. He had one final card to play, and he hoped it would work. He rose from his desk and walked around, then got down on his hands and knees before Naruto and pleaded, Naruto, it would make me the happiest, proudest father to have you marry Hinata. And I know for a fact there's nothing in the world she wants more than to be with you, so if you marry her, you'll make her happier than you can imagine as well. Please, Naruto, tell me what I have to do to convince you to consent to this. Naruto couldn't take it anymore. He busted out laughing. 
Soon he was doubling over and then fell to the floor, clutching his sides laughing uproariously. Hayashi slowly rose to his feet, confused as to this reaction. Naruto eventually calmed down, then rose and stood before Hayashi, still chuckling. Naruto, please tell me what is so funny. I never intended to refuse you, Naruto told him, turning his own words back on him. I just wanted to have some fun. And it worked. That was priceless. Hayashi smiled as he recognized his words to the blonde when he had asked to date Hinata, to begin with. Naruto smiled, wiping a tear from his eye from laughing. Of course I'll consent to marrying Hinata. Hayashi smiled, then said, good revenge Naruto. But tell me, are you doing this because you want to? Naruto nodded emphatically. Then I am happy to have you as a future son-in-law. He extended a hand, which Naruto shook. I'll see you tomorrow then, Lord Hayashi? Hayashi nodded, then said, but please, Naruto, call me father. Naruto smiled. He'd never had a father before, but he was looking forward to the experience. He smiled, then hugged Hayashi, who smiled and hugged the young man in return. See you tomorrow, then, father. Naruto said, bowed slightly, and left. Hayashi smiled as he watched him go, then stood and made his way to Hinata's room. He just had to tell Hinata the good news. He knocked on her door. Come in. He heard her voice from within, and he entered. He wasn't quite done with his fun yet, so he decided to play with Hinata a little, too. He grinned and sat in the seat by her bed, hiding his smile carefully. Well, Hinata, I approached Naruto about our proposition. She seemed confident. But he continued, he refused. Hayashi looked sad. And technically he wasn't lying. Naruto had refused, at first. Hinata's face fell. Why would Naruto refuse? He had proposed to her. Was he just toying with her? No. She couldn't believe that. Perhaps then she realized her father wasn't done talking, so she listened. I offered him money, respect, power, anything he could ever dream of. And still he said no. She was stunned, but she wasn't going to interrupt. She waited. Then I told him that I would be proud to have him as a son-in-law, and that I knew nothing would make you happier than to be with him. I told him that, Hayashi looked up at his daughter at this, and grinned, and he accepted. Hinata squealed in delight, and threw her arms around her father's neck. He hugged her back. I'm so happy for you, Hinata, and I love you. I love you, too, father, and thank you so much for doing this. I will be in your debt forever. Hinata was so happy. She had everything she'd ever dreamed of. Her father and her cousin respected her, Naruto loved her and was going to marry her, and her father had even gone to Naruto and arranged the marriage. So her clan and the village couldn't do anything to stop it. She had every dream she'd ever had, and they were all true. She laid back on her bed and fell asleep almost immediately, the happiest smile of her life on her face. Hayashi smiled at her, kissed her forehead, then left her room. His daughter's life was finally falling into place, and she was happy, so he was happy as well. He was smiling, too, the first true smile, he'd smiled in several years. So it was that Naruto and Hinata began a truly happy future together. This was all for now. Thank you for watching, I hope you liked it and that you will be back for more. Please like, share and subscribe. See ya.